Hi, this is Dave Liu with the Mid-Atlantic Brimfire Series. This is the final installment of our ongoing series on how to choose the right scope for you. Uh, today we're talking about reticles and how to choose one. Reticles are probably the, one of the biggest things you're going to be interacting with, right? That's what you see. It's the, the, the crosshairs, what style they are, right? So in general, there's two styles of reticles right now that are really popular. They're the, the basic crosshairs, and I have them down here. The basic crosshair style and the Christmas tree reticle. Now, there, there are definitely variations on both these styles, but this is a good representation. Uh, as you can see here, uh, the reticle is what's in red, right? These numbers in black right here and here, they're, they're the distances. They're, they're, they're basically like how far these hash marks and the size of these hash marks. So it's a good way to kind of illustrate what you're looking at, how big they are. Now, the crosshair style, a lot of guys like this because there's not a lot going on in this reticle, right? You could see your target and there's not a lot of stuff obscuring it. And it, but it still has your hash marks and all your different holds in that so that you can, you don't need to dial necessarily. If you want to, if you're a type of shooter that likes to hold, there are these little hash marks for you to, to reference here. Uh, as opposed to over here on the Christmas tree style, right? Um, this also has all the different hash marks, but it has this additional Christmas tree reticle. Now, what is that for? Well, let's say you're holding, right? And that you're not dialing in this case, you're gonna be holding for a shot. It's, it's gonna be a shot that's gonna be two mils down. So you're gonna hold at this line here, which is two. But let's say there's some wind that day and there's two mils of wind that day. Well, that means that you wanna to hold to one side two mils. That's gonna be the point right here. Now, some guys, they don't need, they could shoot out in the middle of, there's no reference marks over here. So some guys have no problem lining up the two uh, elevation and the two windage to be able to shoot at that point there. They can do that in their mind. But for me, I have a hard time imagining that. I'd like to actually see it. So on this reticle, you can see at the two elevation hash mark and the two uh, windage, there's actually a dot right there. And that's the dot that I'm going to be holding on when I take that shot. So for me, that's better. Now, if you feel that's too busy, there's too cluttered and it distracts you, which is a totally valid argument, that might, this not, might not be the reticle for you. And you might like this uh, crosshair style better. Now, a couple other things to consider, right? One is the center. You can see on this crosshair style, the, the crosshairs go right through the center. They're, they're, they're the next mark, right? And they... A lot of guys like it. It's a good reference point for the center, but at the same time, that can obscure some of your target. The lines do have some thickness, and when you're shooting out to long ranges with small targets, those lines can might get in the way. So on this reticle, there's actually the, the crosshairs stop close to the middle, and there's a small, as you can see, 0 0.04 sized mill dot in the center. That's a very small dot for very precise shooting. So if you are shooting at something like a matchstick, this would be a much better option because it'll allow you to see that matchstick and see your target where these, these lines might obscure that matchstick. Another thing to consider is the, the distances between these hash marks. Over here, as you can see, the distance between these hash marks are 0.5. And these are, again, in mils. So there are 0.5 mils between these hash marks. So if you're shooting at a target that's uh, one and a half mils, if there's a one and a half mils of, of, uh, of wind, then you hold on that hash mark there. Here's one, there's two, between one and two, there's a hash mark at 1.5. That's great if it's whole numbers, but let's say you have 1.2 mils of wind. Well, there's no real hash marks here for 0.2, so you're gonna have to imagine you, you, gotta have to cut, you have to use your, your imagination to kind of cut that distance in half and do a little bit less, and that's where your, your windage uh, uh, shot's gonna be up to take. As opposed to this uh, reticle over here, which has, you can see these marks have a 0.2 difference, distance in between them. So there will be a 1.2, is that first small hash mark right there. That allows you to have a precise 1.2 hold, which is a little bit, more precise and gives you a little bit more frame of reference. Now, again, the argument of this is more busy. So there's a lot more hash marks that can be distracting. This has less. If you have no problems uh, imagining the, the distance in between, which a lot of guys do, 
this might be better because it's uncluttered and you can see more of your target. Whereas this, for me, I like having small hash marks so that I can be very precise with my shots. Also, the distances aren't exclusive to either one of these. You can have a crosshair style reticle with 0.2 hash marks itself. I'm just using these two to illustrate the difference. All right, the last point I also like you to consider is that um, the orientation of where the hash marks are. As you can see, for this finer reticle where they do have the 0.2 mil hash marks. The 0.2 mil hash marks are above the center line. The 0.5 hash mark, which is the, the, this hash mark here, is below the center line. So it's easy to differentiate between I want to hold 0.2 or if I want to go all the way to 0.5, I know I don't have to count 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6. I'll know that the medium size hash mark on the bottom of the reticle is going to be my 0.5. So that's, a, that's just to illustrate the fact that reticle design can have a big influence on how fast you can acquire things. There are some reticles where they have this hash mark above the line as well. So it can get a little confusing of which line is my 0.2, which line is my 0.5, and so forth. So try out reticles. They can be quite complicated. There can be a lot in them that allows you to do lots of different things. You can see higher up, you have these very, very fine graduation marks. What are these for? Well, these aren't so much for shooting as they're for milling. They're for estimating distance. So you could use this reticle with these fine adjustments to measure how many mils tall a target is. So let's say you have a, a IPSC, a human-sized target, and if it's one mil, and you can measure the feet are at the bottom of the hash mark and the heads at the top. If you can measure that it's 1. Uh, 1.9 mils, then you'll, you'll be able to put that into a calculator. You could use some mathematics to, to estimate how far of a distance that will be. So that's another plus of both of these reticles. They both have very fine graduation marks so that you can measure, you can mill out distances of reticles when you want to also. So reticles, there's a lot of engineering that goes into reticles. There's a lot of design that goes into reticles. So take your time and look at all the different reticle options and choose which one you think will best shoot your shooting style. And of course, there's really no substitute in that. You gotta try lots of different reticles to see what you like. You gotta shoot them under match conditions to see if you like using these different hold points or not, or whether you like a nice, crisp, clean, uh, crisp, crisp, clean, simple reticle that doesn't distract you too much. Thanks for watching. This was our final video on how to choose the right scope for you. Hope you found the information valuable. Uh, hope it helps you on your purchasing decisions and uh, see you out in the range.